One of the wonderful things about teachers is how conscientious we tend to be. But that can cause us some problems because sometimes we're overwhelmed by the amount of work and the amount of curriculum that we've got to deliver. And then, of course, into the classroom comes two children who are new to English. And we're thinking, ah, how can we cope with this? Well, I'm going to tell you what you should do. And the first thing you should do do is give up the word should. The word should is really problematic for us. Stop thinking about should and instead of about that think about the word could. What could we do that would make our lives easier, which would help the children who are new to English, which would help all the children in the class? Wow, that's a really tall order, but there are one or two things that we could do that will not involve a huge amount of work hopefully make our lives easier. The first thing I suggest is that we write a list of words. Now words are the basis of all language, so let's focus on words. Choose the most important words from your lesson and write a short list. And when I say a short list, I mean one or maybe six, but really not more than six. So just choose the key word or words that are really necessary for your lesson. So if you're teaching osmosis, then you might choose osmosis itself, of course, and then maybe something like semi-permeable membrane. But those four words would be all that you would choose. If you were choosing um, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, well, there's lots of language you could choose. But one key word which crops up so often, which is quite difficult, is the word to. T -O -O, as in the porridge is too hot, the bed is too soft, the chair is too hard. So that's the one word I would choose. Now once you've chosen your words, your word list, now you've got a focus for your language work in the class. And what you're going to do is make sure that every single child in the class knows and understands all the key words that you've written down. And in doing that, you'll actually be focusing your work for the children learning EAL and helping them as well. So now we've got our key words, what can we do with them? Well, the first and most obvious thing is to tell the children. Right? These are the key words we're going to be looking out for, maybe even write them on the board. And that means when you are doing your presentation or showing the video or whatever it is you're doing, they will be listening out for those particular words. Mm. And the next thing is to think in terms of group work. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, you will know that I think in children interacting with each other is crucial for all children to help them learn to think and to learn to talk, but also particularly for EAL children. So, what group work could we do? Oh, well, the simplest one is say, well, what's, a, what's the definition? Not looking it up in a dictionary, but actually discussing it and writing it themselves. Or if that's too difficult, how about writing sentences with those particular words in? But making sure they're discussed first, so that we've got the interaction between pupils going on. Now, the third thing you could do is some translation. If you're lucky enough to have somebody in your class who speaks the same language as the children who are new to EAL, ask them to translate for them and talk about it in their first language. Now, a translation is an extremely high-level language skill and you can only translate if you really understand the words. So if you're using words like too, mu <laughs> too much, too soft, too hard or osmosis, then the children who are going to translate have really got to understand those words before they can translate them. So you will be helping them to learn the curriculum because you're asking them to translate and help the children who are new to English. So don't be shy of asking children to use that higher level language skill because it will help not only their first language but also their English and their curriculum understanding. Another thing you can do is ask children who don't share the same first language to explain it in English. Now, that helps the children who are doing the explaining. 
First, they've got to really understand the subject themselves, and that's the key for curriculum learning. Then they've got to think about what language they're going to use. How are they going to explain it? How are they going to make their language simple? And by this explaining, they're going to be developing a personal relationship with the newcomers, and of course they're going to be taking some seriously important responsibility, which is really what we want children to be doing. So, again, get children to help children, and you will have to do nothing. And I think that's really important. The more nothing a teacher does, the better. Yeah, definitely. Other group work that's simple to um, organise is simply to ask the children to think about what were the most important words in the lesson. And of course, if you've forgotten to write your list at the beginning, that's a, re a quick way around. Get them to do the work for you. If you're working with primary children, ask them to retell the story to each other. Or if you're working with secondary children, how about getting them to summarise the lesson in as few words as possible? That's a really focusing activity and takes no preparation from you. You don't have to ask any special questions. Just do the summary, just retell the story or retell the lesson. But it's all good group work. It helps all the children in the class, including those who are learning English as an additional language.